Thanks very much. Well, welcome everybody. Really nice to see you. And um, what we're going to be doing today, as you probably already know, is we're going to be looking at the idea of remote working. Um, we're going to be looking firstly at, um, you know, what is it like being a remote worker? And I'm, I'm sure you know that already. Uh, so we're going to look at a, 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 a that a little bit. And then we're also going to be looking at, more importantly, from, from, from manager's point of view, you know, what the differences are, you know, what can we do to, uh, to ensure that our remote workers um, are producing what we need, what we need them to produce. Um, so, um, we've got some uh, session objectives here, and you can see, hopefully, um, we're going to look very briefly at what remote working is, what the challenges are for remote workers themselves. And then, as I say, the main part of the, se of the session is looking at some, some hints and tips um, about remote working. And then, of course, last but not least, we're going to be looking at um, where, who else has got information that might be useful to you and um, hopefully address any questions that, 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 you, that you might have. So um, my, my background very much has been um, working as a, a, an HR consultant. And of course, uh, part of that particular role has been working with working in international settings. And of course, for the past 20 years or more, um, we've been managing remote workers internationally, of course, because, uh, you know, that, that's part of an international organisation. So, um, so remote working isn't new, um, although obviously it is new for, for many, many managers and workers, um, you know, with this emergency situation that, that, that is happening. So, um, just a, a, a little, a little uh, a quote here, um, and uh, what the research suggests, um, you know, over the last 20 years or so, is that actually remote working is on the whole advantageous to both employers and employees. And so we, um, you know, we, we would like, certainly I think, generally speaking, we would come from that kind of idea that it is the, in, in principle, it's very much an advantage for, for, for everybody. Um, so that's uh, quite an interesting idea because um, quite often we have very traditional employers uh, and certainly very traditional managers who feel that actually remote working is not advantageous because uh, perhaps there's an emphasis on presenteeism, Perhaps there's an emphasis on office hours. Uh, and I think, as you were mentioning earlier, Lisa, it's about the idea that maybe people don't think that you're working if you're working, if you're actually based at home. So, um, it, you know, the, the, the uh, research so far says that actually it's very much an advantage. But of course, there are a number of challenges for the actual worker themselves. And um, one of the one of the, uh, the the main issues is loneliness, of course. And um, certainly, if people are used to going to the workplace and getting much of their social contact through the workplace, um, it can be very difficult. And um, the the the, the uh, research suggests that um, it takes a few months for workers to begin to. Um, accept uh, this kind of um, isolation in a sense and so of course as managers we need to, to, to consider that. Um, the other thing apart from isolation is the distractions that we have at home. <laughs> um, you know the dogs, the cats, the kids, the, the, the other halves, uh, you know, all those distractions that, that we might have. And, and again, um, you know, we need to, con you know, individuals need to consider that. Um, lack of access to information, of course. Um, one of the, the big things in the workplace is that the part of the 
the culture of the organization centers around gossip. <laughs> and certainly all the politics and those kinds of things. So of course, when you are based at home, of course, you don't have access to that. So it's a, a, a lack of access to information, whether it's formal or, or, or informal. So we have to, to think about um, employees in, in that kind of uh, circumstance. And then, of course, the, the, the lack of face-to-face -face supervision um, uh, from, from both the manager's point of view and, and the worker's point of view. So there's a lot of things for individuals who haven't been involved in remote working before. There's a lot of, there's a lot of um, issues which they need to overcome as individual workers. And, of course, um, the next thing we have to think about is, is well you know how are we going to assist our workers to be productive from the, the a management perspective and uh, this is where we kind of look at the main issues for um for for uh, managing our workers one of the most important things that the research suggests so far is the a trust issue um, the idea that the manager would need really to accept the idea of flexible working sorry i'm moving down to the bottom there and um, the idea that um, the acceptance of, of the fact that actually presenteeism isn't relevant anymore and that we are measuring people in a different way so that, that's a very important aspect because, of course, traditionally, our managers have been very much a, a case of um, you know, using presenteeism as a, as a, as a type of um, performance criteria uh, when, we're, when we're looking at performance of our, of our workers. So trust is an, uh, an essential part of business success and being able to trust our teams, be able to trust our workers is, is vital. And of course, the whole dynamics of trusts change, um, you know, as, as soon as, um, you know, as soon as that happens. Um, sorry, I just seem to have flicked too far. There we go. My apologies for that. Um, the, the other thing is looking at trust is this, this lack of a physical interaction. Um, it's, you know, as you, as you know, it's very difficult to, um, to interact in a virtual environment in comparison to face-to-face. Uh, -face. And, and that's, you know, and that, of course, then undermines the trust that, that, that we have. And um, we also, I think, as, as uh, managers, we need to identify what the expectations of workers are. So in other words, um, in order to ensure that the, the, the relationship, the trust relationship is there, that we, as a manager, need to identify the expectations of workers um, in this new situation. So there's a whole load of issues around building trust, uh, around having mutual trust and mapping out some kind of clear vision that um, that puts trust at the centre of everything because without that trust um, between the, the manager and the worker who you know who are probably both working remotely um, then of course you know that uh, you know that the, the, the relationship and the well-being of the, the individuals concerned are going to be um, at, uh, at risk. Um, the next pretty obvious one really is the, the technology. <laughs> you know, as, as uh, just now, of course, I just uh, skipped, <laughs> uh, skipped uh, uh, a slide because I accidentally <laughs> pushed the wrong button. So, um, so technology, of course, is the, 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 the backbone of, of, this, um, of this new remote working. And the absence of technical support um, means that 
um, you know, you, that, that you're kind of often left in, you know, left high and dry. Um, so, you know, there has to be a huge investment, of course, from the management, from the employ employers, uh, the organisation perspective to, to, um, to, to invest in that and also to choose those tools very, very carefully. There are a number of, there are a number of examples where organisations have bought in new technology in order to enhance remote working, or in fact, enhancing any kind of IT situation. And of course, those tools have failed because of the wrong, you know, the wrong, um, you know, the wrong situation, the wrong, the wrong tools have been, have been ch uh, chosen. Um, but of course, the most uh, significant advantage to, to, to this, of course, is the um, uh, the the, the um, economic advantages of working remotely. Um, you know, you don't have to uh, provide offices. You don't have to <laughs> you don't have to look at travel problems, and there's a whole range of issues. So. You know, having this technology in place, although it might be costly in the first place, from a management perspective, you know, it certainly is very, um, you know, much, much more, uh, much cheaper, uh, providing that you are, um, actually, providing you're choosing your tools uh, carefully. So some of the research suggests that it's more tiring uh, to um, communicate all the time um when it's face to face what well, you know ra so rather than uh, expecting workers to uh, to be on screen all the time um the uh, research suggests that it is very tiring for all, all parties so you need to enable meetings to be audio only so for 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 people to be able to mute for, for people to be able to turn the screen off um, the reason for that, the um, research says that um, because we are not face to face, we're not picking up body language cues. Um, so that means that because we, we have to focus entirely on people's faces, which means that we're not picking up all of our non-verbal communication. And um, one of the um, ideas, of course, to um, to, to counteract that would be to set up an informal work, uh, an informal chat space. So, for example, you would have maybe a, a some kind of informal chat with, amongst workers, some kind of um, chat chat room, which would enable people to to to, to discuss things uh, more informally, and um, also some kind of. Uh, some kind of agreement that anything in that is, is com anything within that chat room is confidential <laughs> of course because you're not going to have a chat and uh, share your views about something if, if you know that uh, you know it's going to be monitored by you know by yourselves um so technology very very important so the first thing is trust secondly technology um the next main um, thing that I wanted to talk about was was communications. Um, we, we touched on that a, a, um, a, a little bit um, when we talked about setting up a chat space. Um, again, the research suggests that to have an amicable work relationship, um, and particularly remotely, is that you need to have a conversation, an informal conversation prior to setting a meeting off and um, so uh, some kind of informal conversation informal chat uh, just like you would probably do at a face-to-face -face meeting you know so things like you know how are you you know what have you been up to you know so those kinds of informal things so rather than going straight into a meeting uh, and the, the formal meeting that you actually begin the meeting with a conversation um, and that makes the uh, the conversations a, a, a much better. It makes um, an informal business environment, and it enhances the the teamwork approach, through, so that you are actually bringing people in um, and forming a relationship with them virtually. Um, 
and, and again, because the not, there, are non, there are no non-verbal cues available, you have to replace those non-verbal cues with something else. So that's uh, another reason for beginning, and me beginning meetings uh, with conversation. Um, so, so that's um, again that's that's based in in um, research. Um, that was uh, two thousand and two. Some research by someone called Roper who 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 looked at that. Um, but 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 obviously that was in a situation where where people were mate, were remote working because of their job as opposed to the um, emergency situation that we have now. But um, I do believe that, that this, obviously this research is still going to be relevant, you know, to, to, to today. So um, <clears throat> we also think that, uh, again, that the research suggests again that um, managers should be encouraging feedback. So that um, encouraging feedback between the manager and, and the employee, uh, both ways, of course. Um, and encouraging feedback means that, of course, that you can uh, change direction as, as you go along. And the kind of management style is very much changing from perhaps a traditional management style to to what we call the servant leadership, servant leadership style, so that you are that, that rather than rather than managing in a traditional way, you're managing in the sense of being of being a facilitator almost. So this feedback is is very 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 important. Um, so the evidence demonstrates. I'm just reading something here from my my research here. Empirical evidence demonstrates a positive correlation between um, creating an informal business environment and achieving organisational goals. So, um, so that this is uh, certainly worth considering when you are um, when you are managing managing uh, workers remotely. Our next um, slide looks at uh, communications. Again, this is leading on from, from the previous one. The um, greatest problem, of course, <laughs> in, uh, in, in um, this kind of situation is the challenge of time and distance. Uh, those that are working internationally will be very much aware of that in terms of time zones. Um, distance of course that's going to be quite relevant in in um in, in a domestic setting of course um because of those challenges effective communication is even more crucial and in terms of these communications we have to be very careful of misinterpretation in other words when we are communicating through a, a remote uh, channels um we can very easily misinterpret what the other person is saying. Okay, that's an idea that we're, we're not seeing the whole person, you know, we're only seeing a person's face, we're not seeing their body language, we're not seeing everything which is part of the communication of human, be, you know, human behaviour. So we have to be very careful of that. Um, so, um, as, as well as that, in order to enhance the communication, we have to also find ways of encouraging a sense of belonging. So, um, so as I mentioned before, setting up in, informal um, chat rooms, um, trying to perhaps pair people up, remote workers up, um, in terms of sort of buddy, come sort of mentor, coach, whatever, whatever kind of... Um, relationship that, that you might want. Um, again, all, all the things that you would do to encourage a sense of belonging in the workplace, you just have to translate that into, um, into a remote working situation. So, you know, so, so mentors, coaches, teams, buddy, buddy systems, those, you know, those kind of things. And, you know, they can work just as well um, remotely as they can um, face to face. 
So, um, so, so that's uh, the communications. The next um, area I wanted to, to discuss with you was about agreeing goals. We've already suggested, haven't we, that presenteeism really isn't going to be relevant anymore. Um, and that we have to measure performance through the tasks that you are asking people to, 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 um, to, to do. Um, so you would be changing your, your, your criteria to completing particular tasks or going through a particular process or setting goals um, along a, a, a time frame um, that you would check in and evaluate regularly. So, so that's pretty much important in terms of you know, agreeing goals. And you have to, of course, negotiate that. You have to negotiate that very, very carefully. Um, so you're going back on a, on a regular basis. You then have to think about well, how are you going to organise your how are you going to organise your remote working? Um, you could in fact be looking at teams, team working where the team has a goal, um, or of course you could there uh, conversely you could look at perhaps group working. Um, so you have to, to to consider about you know how how are you going to meet these goals. You have to consider whether they're going to be individual goals, whether they're going to be group goals or team goals in terms of, you know, what kind of importance are you going to put on those things? Are you going to offer rewards for, for, for teamwork? And, um, you know, what kind of reward system might you utilise in terms of, a, a, you know, a remote working situation? And then, of course, lastly, on this slide here, you need to consider about how you're going to share the information about your goals that you've that you've set up. Um, you know, how you're going to share it, and, and of course, how how you're going to monitor it. But but certainly, presenteeism is is out the window. It really doesn't matter, um, you know, how many hours someone is working on their laptop. It really doesn't matter as long as they are actually coming up with the goods at the end of the day. And that's something which is really difficult for someone who's used to face to face management. And particularly, perhaps some managers who are micromanagers, that's very, very, a very, very difficult concept uh, to, 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 um, to, to grasp. But it's a completely different way of managing people. So what about the risks? What about the risks? And again, this is something else that the manager needs to be very aware of. Um, of course, the, the, the first and most obvious one is the failing technology. We've already talked about investment in, in technology. We've talked about you know, uh, using the right tools. And uh, the second thing, again, that I've already mentioned, the risk of isolation. So if you haven't set up the, the groups or the buddy system or whatever else you're, you're, you're hoping to, to, to do, then there is a strong chance of isolation. There is a, a strong chance of um, risking the mental health of remote workers. And of course, as a, an organisation, it is responsible for the health and, and well-being of, um, of workers not only their mental health but also their physical health and so if you're working remotely the, the organization has just as much responsibility to check that they have a suitable workstation that their chair is is the right specification and you know so all of those things that you would um you know the risks that you would assess in an office situation you would have to have some kind of system in place uh, for assessing, you know, assessing the risk in, in the worker's home. Um, so, so that's, um, so the mental health and physical health of, of remote workers, of employees. And the other risk, of course, is because communication is much more difficult, you're going to have to tailor your feedback very carefully. 
So again, people are not going to be able to pick up the nuances of any feedback uh, because of the nature of the, the communication process in, in remote working. So feedback about people's, um, people's um, productivity, about their performance, et cetera, has to be very uh, tailored very, very carefully. And of course, we don't just have to think about the remote workers, the employees, <laughs> health and well-being, we also have to think about you as managers. Um, you know, it's all very well saying, well, actually, yes, we need to look after our uh, workers differently. We also have to make sure that we look after ourselves differently. We have to consider our own health and well-being. You know, perhaps we actually need to talk to our line managers and say, well, actually, you know, let's let's get some goals, let's let's agree a few things. You know, can I you know, can, can I buddy up with a, a, another manager and, you know, and, and really make sure that you're looking after yourselves as managers. The risks for the employee employees is exactly the same as the managers in this new, this new situation. Um, I think uh, we also need to think about our employees' lifestyles. Now, um, you know, luckily, my background, as you can see, is a, 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 an office background, <laughs> which is a photograph. <laughs> and if you could see the mess here. <laughs> um, so that just reminds me about you know, avoiding posing your own values. You know, you're, 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 you're seeing a mess behind you in your in your remote virtual contact with your employees um, yeah so you have to avoid imposing your own values obviously um, and you have to recognize that workers home lives are different you know I'm very lucky I live on my own um, well with, with a few dogs as well and uh, <laughs> luckily my children are grown up now so but of course you know we need to consider that um, you know people's lifestyles and home lives are very very different um, and that might be because of their fam the, the family, it might be because of, of culture, it might be of, of, due to ethnicity. So you need to think about the diversity of the individuals that you are contacting. Um, you know, someone uh, in India um, you know, is going to have a, a very different um, home life. Uh, perhaps someone uh, in the States or, or, or wherever. And of course, within that, even if you're working um, remotely within your domestic uh, country, but, you know, there are still going to be you know, changes and differences uh, due to, to diversity and, and culture and ethnicity. You have also have to consider work-life balance. Quite a lot of um, remote workers tend to work perhaps quite a lot more than if they are in the workplace because they don't have the distractions that they have in the workplace um, what you find is that people will perhaps spend too long on their uh, their laptops or whatever it is that they're using so you have to consider the work-life balance you have to say you know, you have to say to um, to workers that you know you really mustn't be emailing after a certain time, and this and this kind of thing. But you know, you it, it it it's it's tempting to try and get the most out of your worker. Yes, it's very tempting to to try and squeeze that little bit of <laughs> productivity. Out of, out of our workers, but we do have to consider work life balance. Because that presenteeism isn't there in the workplace because uh, you know, they're, they're not attending, you know, even though it's you know, nine to five, at least you know that workers are gonna switch off and have some kind of home, home life balance. So you need to consider, consider that. Uh, be flexible in your arrangements. Um, you know, try and, um, trying to find a suitable time for everybody uh, to, to, to have meetings. Um, you know, there are lots of systems, you know, you can do a poll to, to look at, um, you know, to, to, to decide what's the best time for a particular meeting. So 
So this uh, next slide, I think it might be the last one, or certainly the last few. <laughs> um, again, something that I've already mentioned really, that, that um, traditional management styles have limitations, um, that we need to be engaging and coaching workers. Um, it's an interactive process, much more than perhaps the traditional workplace. You have to agree how and when to communicate. And you also have to keep in touch using different media. So, you know, you might have a, a Zoom meeting on a regular basis, you, you might use the chat boxes, the chat rooms, you might use Skype, you might, you know, you, you need your phone, what, whatever, but you need to to keep in touch using different media, so you're not using the same media all the time. Uh, again, this enables um, the employees to have that variety, that variety of communication, rather than just sticking to, to one particular method. So um, the management style then is, is completely different. Um, and this will take some time, and I think this is probably the most difficult thing for managers in this emergency situation. It's the most difficult um, thing uh, because you have to change, change it completely. Um, and you know, there are lots of books about management styles, and um, you, know, you, you can just Google management styles and you'll get you'll get a whole range. But but I think probably the most appropriate management style for this new situation will be the servant leader. Um, which enables you to be much more of a, of a facilitator. Um, it enables you to, to, to negotiate with your workers. Um, and it, it also has a, a much more informal, um, goal-orientated approach, as opposed to the, the traditional management style. So I think it's worth... I think it's worth managers who are now in this current situation, I think it's worth them having a little bit of a read up about the servant leadership style and the kind of, the kind of actions, the kind of way of communicating, which might be most appropriate in, in, you know, by using that particular style. So we're coming now to the, to the last slide, but again, if you Google remote working, there are loads and loads and loads of loads of things you know there's no there's no end to to it and of course many organizations many private organizations are offering training courses and all all this kind of thing um and of course that you know the university if, if there was a demand you know we could we we could in fact um, run short training courses for you know looking at servant leadership and, and maybe looking at um, remote working in, in a bit more detail rather than this kind of overview which we, which we look at today. Um, but I have, I've just put a few links up there. ACAS do uh, quite, you know, a couple of, couple of good guides. Um, there's a, also there, uh, there's a work safe, work, uh, assessing, assessing risk, which I think I've mentioned. There's the Health and Safety Executive from UK one. Um, and offering a, a toolbox for, for home working. So um, I just put this kind of the main government organisations up there, but there are very many, many, many more, obviously. Um, you, know, you, you would be inundated. <laughs> um, so um, just to summarise, what have we done so far then? We've identified seven main issues when managing remote workers. We've looked at trust, we've looked at communication, um we've looked at um, management and a whole raft of other things in fact there are seven i can't remember them all now <laughs> um we considered certainly considered the challenges for remote workers um we hopefully i've offered a few hints and tips about how you might be more successful as a as a, as a remote manager and um, hopefully i've also signposted you to a little bit more advice. So that is the, the end of my uh, presentation. And um, 
I think it would be quite good if you have any questions that I can help with, or maybe you know the the, the few, we could just you know share share some ideas while whilst we're here. So thank you very much for for listening, and I do hope that you found it a bit useful, and perhaps made you think about other things than 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 you might have done already. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Kate. We've got some questions that have come through. So the first one is from Sarah. Is there a distinction between remote working, which to me implies choice, physical and technological setup, and trying to work from home where physical space dedicated to work is not always there and makes managing teams that much harder, um, giving insights into my team's homes, which I would not otherwise enter? Absolutely, yeah. But, but there, is, there, is a huge, there is a huge difference between... between the two and um, certainly when you are setting up remote working you you really do need to try and encourage staff to to actually set up um you know a, a bespoke workspace um all the all the research suggests that that is the best way forward um so yes there is a there is a difference between remote working and working from home and, you know, remote working, in fact, in fact, you can do that anywhere, can't you? I think you mentioned earlier, you know, you could be on, on the beach <laughs> and, and still remote working. But, yeah, working from home is, is, is very different. And uh, uh, you do have to, as part of your risk assessment, essentially, you would have to look at, um, you know, where, where are the employees working from? Um, have they got... Um, a particular space that they that they can utilize etc etc so yeah it is very different remote working and working from home are, are are two different ideas but but obviously linked thank you for that another question from lisa any examples of useful tech that is particularly effective sorry any examples of useful tech that you could use um, now I'm not an IT specialist, unfortunately. Um, my partner is, but he's not here at the moment. Um, I think that the ones that are that are, are mainly useful are would, would be things like you know things like this, things, things like Zoom. Um, a, a lot of people seem to be using Teams at the moment um, uh, because of uh, you know the, the sort of Microsoft. Um, at Microsoft Outlook um, suite of, 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 of things, and and because Microsoft seems to be the main um, main provider of um, of laptops, then um, <clears throat> that would be probably the the, the ones that I would suggest. Um, the other thing you have to think about is is whether you want your staff to have access. To organisational information, in other words, you know, into the actual system, the, the organisation system itself, and of course that would need a whole, a whole different um, uh, and additional process. So um, yeah, I don't think there's anything in, in particular in terms of tech other than utilising what's already available uh, with um, Microsoft Office 365, isn't it? Okay. Thank you. Uh, another question from Lisa. Um, are there any resources on how to bring about the change in management styles? Any thoughts on a combination of remote working and being in the workplace? Um, so is, is, is that, um, to, so, so sorry, so can you explain that a little bit more? What? Lisa, do you want to unmute yourself and ask the question? You'll probably give it more uh, meaning than I will. Yeah, it came across as one, but it's two different ones. So the first one is just you, you were commenting on um, the changes in management styles from a traditional to something different and saying that that might be something that you'd look at. Well, I just think something like that would be really useful because I think that's probably where a lot of organisations are going to find themselves that, you know, certainly us, not even talking about remote access, we're saying, well, we've had this situation thrust upon us, but let's use it as an opportunity to say, at the end of all this, what kind of organisation do we want to be? And we're looking at being more nimble and, and you know, less traditional and remote working will be part of that. So I think definitely resources on that would be very beneficial. Um, and then the second uh, point, which was a, a different question was, I'm kind of envisaging that we might have a situation whereby 
uh, some of our team members come back into the workplace for some of the time and work remotely for some of the time and is that a, a sort of best of both worlds or is it a, a, an undesirable neither one thing nor the other from your perspective? Um, no, well, from, from, my, from my perspective, it, it is actually um, a, very, a, a very successful, a very successful um, uh, way to go forward. Um, and I think a lot of organisations will do that in the future. Um, in, in as much as the, you know, as, as far as the, the virus is concerned, obviously you need to cut down the number of people that are in the office. Um, in terms of social distancing, so so that 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 might be an imperative, in cer certainly initially. Um, but but secondly, if you are able to um, to enable people to work flexibly by by uh, changing their hours or or changing their attendance, or you know, I think that the more flexible your organisation can be, it means that you can be more flexible. As, a, as an organisation for the future. In fact, um, Karen and I were talking about this just before we started, you know, we were, you know, we were saying, well, actually, um, as, if I can work flexibly, you know, for, for you as an organisation, if you're going to take my personal circumstances into account and enable me to work when it's right and, and measure me by what I achieve as opposed to how many hours I'm online, um, then that means that I'm very happy then to, you know, if needs be, to, to, to support the organisation in some kind of new venture. Because now I can, you know, if you're flexible with me, I'll be flexible with you. And that's exactly what Karen, I, Karen was, was talking about this morning. So there are so many advantages to flexible working or remote working. Um, you know, and it depends on how you interpret this remote working and how you manage it. Um, and, and that's the most crucial thing is, you know, remote working. You, you, can, you can be a remote worker, but you, can, you, you may still be tied to office hours. But is that, is that the best way forward? No, it isn't. <laughs> you know, if, you, if you're wanting to respond quickly to, to new opportunities, then, you know, you, you need to be flexible, you need a flexible workforce and remote working is part of that flexibility. So that, that's my, uh, my take on it so far anyway. And certainly the research suggests that, that that's the case. Thank you, Kate. I've got a question. One of your early slides, you talked about trust and the importance of building trust when you're remote working. So, have you got any tips as to how we can build trust when it's at the moment not always possible to get your teams together? Um, one of the things I think I mentioned earlier was, was getting this sort of chat room um, going. Um, and um, that obviously increases trust. The more, the more that we use that, the, the, the better. What, what we found is that with the chat room situation, that... Um, People started off very formally, and then after a few weeks, people started posting, you know, um, jokes and things like that. So, so it moved away from um, being, uh, you know, trusting people um, with, with using humour. You know, whereas you know, a few weeks before that, they wouldn't have done that. Um, obviously, appropriate jokes rather than inappropriate jokes. Um, so, so a, a chat room is, is a very good way of, of, of building trust in, in that particular way. Um, and in, in addition, all those things I mentioned earlier about, about negotiating and, and expectations and, and all, all of those other things. So there are lots of, there are a, a lot of management techniques that you can use. You just have to adapt them to a remote working situation and, and, and that, that's the trick is actually being, being aware of what the difficulties are and then finding ways to make sure that that remote working is, um, is happening in a positive way. Okay, thank you very much. Has anybody got, else got any questions? Um, feel free to unmute yourself and ask them if that's easier than using the chat function.
okay? No? Yeah, just, just a comment, and it was to bounce back on Lisa's thing. I think that it may be early days, or at least in our organization, it's early days to talk about best practices, but there are some things that we do want to carry forward. Um, we've learned a lot about flexibility, working in smaller but more multi-competence teams in France. They tend to organize unique expertises. So people are having to be a little bit more uh, um, uh, branching out into new domains, which is interesting. A tricky factor culturally is in a country that is very hierarchical, that venerates presence. Absolutely. It wasn't my management style before. Uh, so it hasn't been a challenge for me, but I know that it's been a challenge for colleagues and imagining that your people can work without you, whereas I come more from a training background as you judge the quality of the manager by the work they do when you're not there, which in France, it's what's when they're there. Um, but it's, it's uh, yeah, this, this kind of feeling that perhaps the co a combination will be carried forward. Um, and so there are some interesting lessons and some never do's again. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well said, Sarah. I quite, I quite agree with you there. Yeah. Well, thank you everybody for attending. Um, if you've got any more questions, if you think of something after the session finishes or you'd like some more information, or you've got some suggestions for future webinars, um, that would be very, we'd be very interested to hear that. There's um, an email address you can use. It's execed at wlv.ac.uk. That's E-X-E-C-E-D, all one word, at wlv.ac.uk. We welcome your feedback on the session. We welcome suggestions of additional sessions. If you've got any questions for Kate or I, please use the email address. Um, other than that, thank you very much for your attendance. Um, hopefully the sun is shining where you are because it's just come out here for me now. So um, I'll close the session now and hope everybody has a very pleasant afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lovely to meet you. Good luck. Bye. Bye.